Hey guys, it's Ethan. I just wanted to talk to you guys and do some little housekeeping before we start the uh, the episode. Uh, as of right now, you can find Style and Direction on anywhere you can get podcasts, whether that's SoundCloud or the podcast app. And we'd really appreciate it if you guys left us a review, uh, give us a rating, and maybe even subscribe. Because it would really help us out and uh, help other people find out about the show. And also, you know, if you guys wanted to share this on Facebook, on Instagram, or whatever, uh, we'd really like that too. Because... Uh, we're definitely going to start uh, hammering out episodes and uh, on like a bi-weekly basis. So uh, without further ado, here is the first official episode of Style and Direction. Hi guys, welcome to Style and Direction, a classic menswear podcast without the stuffiness. This is your host, Ethan Wong. And I'm Spencer Adi. So, Ethan, yes. it's been a while. It's been quite it's a been. while. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have been you know, keeping track uh, of the podcast, but I think we recorded the first episode in like... A year ago. May? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, a decade. Um and then we uploaded it like in September, uh-huh. and then we we're did recording. nothing. Yeah, we've been just been really busy um, with <laughs> yep. with life. You know, you say know how you know how life goes. Yeah, yeah, that's what the French say mm-hmm. um, when they record podcasts. Um, but anyway, we're back now, and we hopefully are able to do this on a more regular basis. Yeah, uh, I think we talked about maybe like a two-week release schedule, something like that. That should yeah. hopefully give us, you know, we should be able to schedule that around our, our busy, busy lives. Because um, we're just so busy. To come up with half an hour of content every two weeks, so. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's- we we want to please you guys, and we want you know this is still a really we want cool project us that to be pleased. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so uh, the first episode we kind of talked about, I guess, more of the pilot than yeah. than a real episode. But we kind of talked about you know what got us into menswear and our, our kind of views on it, and uh, we we thought that the first like topic centric episode should be focused on vintage because that's kind of I guess what our whole deal is. Yep. Let's make a deal. Um, Let's <laughs> classic deal show no Wayne deal. Brady. Yeah. Um, this is how we do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we. Uh, this is for some of you guys who know. I mean, um, we got into vintage. Basically, I guess what like what four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. I guess something for, like for that. me, yeah, something about that like that, and. For me, it's what got me into menswear in general. You know, a lot of people kind of go the opposite where they they get into suits and then they kind of figure out, you know, what nuances of menswear they like. It's ivy, it's Italian, whatever, and they kind of go to vintage. But for me, vintage is what got me into even dressing up and dressing better to begin with. Yeah, it was the same thing for me because before I got into vintage and even for a little while after I got into vintage and uh, had yet to build up a wardrobe, my daily wear was like, like graphic tees and like shorts so and for some reason i can't imagine you ever wearing because i haven't and shorts uh i haven't worn those things in a very long time um so that's probably why that's probably why you can't imagine me wearing something i think i did the same thing too because i remember okay personal story time i remember cool uh it was gonna be i think like class picture day and like sophomore year of high school and our, our PE teacher was reminding us about it. And I said, hey, can we wear T-shirts with skulls for the picture? And he gave me this look like, no, you can't because that's weird. And we're in a Christian school. But anyway, that, that was like my cool, edgy. Yeah, you were super edgy. edgy. Yeah, I remember distinctly wearing a Domo T-shirt and a fedora. Nice. And of course, yeah. there's that like fun cosplay pic of you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anime. Um I love but anime. It, I love animu. I haven't uh, seen any anime except Death Note. I'm a poser. And fake. I actually haven't finished Death Note. Sorry about that, Ethan. It's been oh my like... God. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been, been like a while. a long time. Uh-huh. Um, but anyway, so Vintage has kind of played a big deal in both of our menswear journeys. And 
we kind of decided to talk about this because a lot of people have kind of misconceptions about vintage. People want to know what the appeal is. And that's kind of what we're going to uh, get into on in this conversation today. Mm-hmm. So, I guess for me, uh, for talking, you know, if we're going to make a list or something, I think number one, the appeal of vintage is just that it contains so many details you don't see anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, no, this is this is something that I was thinking about uh, when work was slow last night. Um, but it's like I think a lot of the reason that vintage menswear tends to be a little bit more interesting than menswear today is, to, and I'm not advocating for every guy should wear a suit every day. But when right. for the most part men wore suits every day, there were there was a lot of variety to keep things kind of you know interesting to yeah, let people have yeah. their own personal style. Exactly. I think, uh, you know, if you're, if you were cold, like you'd wear like a sport coat. I mean, they were, they were like casual, Mm -hmm. you know, jackets, you know, you know, maybe like the late thirties or whatever, but like, you know, you were wearing like a sport coat almost all the time Mm -hmm. and to kind of differentiate, you know, your business sport coat from your casual sport coat, like they would be like cool details, like belt backs or pleated pockets, you know, stuff that you don't really Yeah. Like that that article that you just put Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. We just, uh, if you if you're keeping track you know i just uploaded an article uh last week that kind of went into the whole like detail tailored details that you don't see anymore Mm -hmm. you know that you only find on like you know 20s through the 60s um sport coats and suits you know it goes into like belt backs um pleated patch pockets you know and goes even to like the width of lapels like even Mm -hmm. where they place the notch and everything and um but it's just really cool because it sets your it really sets your garment apart from you know what's commonplace today, and I mean I guess that you can get it if you know if you do like bespoke or something, but that's if still, you compare it to back then, tough. yeah, yeah, like back in the '30s, like even ready to wear clothes had all those details, mm-hmm. you know, and you compare it to today where like ready to wear has such, I mean they're kind of boring <laughs> I guess yeah it's not that, yeah. Yeah, you know, we're not. I'm not trying to say that like, oh, the, you know, life in the 30s and 40s is like the best time to live ever. No, but it's just that clothes were more interesting back then than mm-hmm. today. Like, again, you know, you could walk into a store and have like a belt back, or like even in the catalog they advertise, like, oh, check out this cool pleated pocket thing or belted this, and you go into like J Crew today and there's like five blue jackets that are like the same and so to keep us from from kind of just like you know circle jerking about like oh why don't (laughs) they make old clothes anymore um do is there any like did last last okay again it's been like 40 years since we recorded the last episode did we talk about how we got into vintage i think so i think we talked about dapper okay well listen to the last episode for that little insight exactly um do you want to, do, should we talk about like our kind of, per, uh, damn it. I should have listened to the old episode before this, but I hate yeah, listening to my voice. <laughs> um, what, what's a kind of like more defined topic that we can talk about? Like stuff like this is our own personal style when it comes to vintage, where to find vintage, fantastic vintages and where to find them, stuff like that. Oh, I love that book. Thanks. Um, well, something I wanted to kind of address is kind of you know is the misconceptions people have about vintage okay you know um so we can get into that i mean lots of people on both spectrums whether you're like you know you're a super j crew banana public kind of guy or whether you're a super bespoke guy you know people don't like vintage for a couple of reasons and i think number one is that it's used Mm -hmm. you know and you know that if that's not your drive then that's there's nothing I can really say to combat that. I mean, I get it. You want something that's new. You don't want something that someone has worn before. Um, But number two, people think it's outdated, which I think is a fairly kind of big misconception. Yeah. Because I think, you know, I mean, yeah. You're supposed to go ahead. Yeah, no, it's like you could say stuff like, oh, it looks, you know, it looks clearly old and outdated for, you know, some stuff like, there's i work at um i work at men's warehouse and i oh, wear no. now you can fish you wait not fish him what is it dox him now oh no you know my name already so <laughs> whoops <laughs> um yeah i work at men's warehouse and it's like i still wear vintage most of the time but i try to stay away from the more like 
crazy stuff like the stuff right, in, right. the stuff in the 40s and 50s i like it i still wear it to like vintage events and stuff like that but i don't wear it to work because i would say that the the period like following world war ii up until like 1956 that's like that vintage does look kind of outdated and out there but yeah i think i think well that's something to address too i think when people think about vintage they kind of have like this blanket term while you know we in in the community i guess we are able to distinguish different eras and some eras like you said are very very dated yeah. you know when uh, i wrote an article for style form that kind of goes into vintage, uh, suit silhouettes by era and i've also written that for like the blog in a in a longer format um but you know stuff like excessive shoulder pads and like mm-hmm. low button stances those kind of characterize like the late 40s to like yeah. the mid 50s and it also characterizes you know like the like mid 80s to like the late 90s yeah so you know stuff like that is definitely very dated mm-hmm. you know it's it's something that you really can't wear and i think that's what kind of gives vintage a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths yeah because you, know? you know for whatever reason a lot of people seem to think that like skinny ties and skinny lapels weren't a thing until like 1960 and then they weren't a thing again until like 2007 so right right yeah so it's you know for us we we kind of have you know a different view of vintage and i think that if you find like the classic pieces and i don't want to circle jerk like oh classic style never goes away you know but there there is you know a sense of that where you Mm -hmm. know when something has like a normal button stance you know or you know a medium to wide lapel and very minimal shoulder padding i think you can wear that today and it's you know it might be slightly out of place for like a j crew thing but if you compare it to like a classical garment from like brooks brothers maybe Mm -hmm. or you know it it looks normal yeah no i mean i have this photo on my phone maybe we could put it on the group or whatever we'll other social media yeah. we have and it's something that if if y'all are into vintage you you've seen before but it's like a group of college students in like 1927 just wearing a bunch of three-piece suits and it's like other than the fact that they're doing the bottom button and nothing else it does not look you know unlike uh, a, a like a more high-end bespoke garment from ethan's favorite place like the armory or wherever else <laughs> he likes yeah you um, got it yeah So, I mean, yeah, it's like, you know, they talk about fashion being cyclical, and I'd say that's that's definitely true, uh, but some stuff doesn't really, yeah, some stuff just doesn't really go out of style. Yeah, I think, yeah, you know, like, people talk about, like, oh, high-waist trousers are coming back. Yeah. Well, like, based on, like, what I've seen, a lot of the tailors that I like today have been wearing that forever. Yeah. And it's just kind of, like, what's been normal, you know, and so I think... And this is also something that you see within vintage itself, because if you, you know, I have, uh, if you look at suits from like high end tailors back in the day, like, uh, like Savile Row or whatever that street in New York was, um, they, well, especially (laughs) European tailors tend to look much older than they are. So like I was in London one summer and I saw, oh, I dropped a bottle cap. I saw, I definitely heard that. Cool. I saw a suit that, like, looked totally 30s. It had, like, a double-breasted vest, black pinstripe. I look at the label, and it's, like, dated, like, 1959. Something like that. So, it's, yeah, it's some stuff just, that's just how people have been wearing it forever. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think, and that's kind of the point of, like, why I dress up sometimes. I kind of prove to people, like, this is vintage, and it's not weird. Yeah. You know, I mean, I wear... I do have a lot of like, you know, 30s and 40s stuff that have like 10 inch, uh, you know, hem legs or whatever. But a lot of what I wear is like 50s to like 70s. And Mm -hmm. if it's softly constructed, it doesn't look out of place today at all. And, you know, it's just a little bit more interesting. You know, like the the fabric's a little bit different. The weight is different. The construction's, you know, probably better than something you'd find off the rack at a mall today. But other than that, it's perfectly fine you know Mm -hmm. oh that's another we should talk about the price as well oh yeah let's get into that because yeah because it's like um i see i see suits for sale today that are like they start at like three hundred dollars they go up to six hundred dollars i have the most i have ever spent on a suit i think was about four hundred and fifty dollars like most stuff i get is between one and two hundred like if that 
that's pretty i mean yeah that's, yeah that's pretty much how it is across the board you know i mean so like like again we talked about details in the very beginning of of the segment um and getting a, a, a suit that has those details today with the same construction same attention to detail same quality it's gonna run you you know upwards half of a thousand, thousand. dollars yeah. yeah or even or even then yeah you know maybe you'll find a a good off the rack one, at like maybe it's like Suit Supply, or like you know, Brunello Cunicelli. But when you get to like the fit and everything, you have to go bespoke, and then that's gonna mm-hmm. run you a lot of money. While vintage, you can you you get that same thing. You get the full canvassing, you get the hundred percent wool, and you get the half lining, quarter lining, or even like no lining. Something that's very difficult to kind of get again off the rack, and you get it for like what two hundred bucks. If yeah, the, if the dealer's feeling all right. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I've spent a lot more than Spencer. Yeah, I think because you, you know, have I mean, you have more money I, okay. than I do. I have, I do. <laughs> I have a full time job. Um, yeah, but I think you know my most expensive vintage suit was probably around four fifty. It was mm-hmm. a uh, three piece Brooks Brothers herringbone uh, sack suit, which I don't think Brooks Brothers even makes anymore today. At least in that no. cut, you know. Um, but I mean, it was it was in perfect condition. You know, there's no holes or anything. Um, it's soft, half lined, high rise trousers. Um, the weight of the of the wool, you know, it's a medium weight. It's fine, and it's something you can't find. You know, even just a regular brown suit. I don't think m- most people make those. Yeah, anymore. seriously. Like someone came into my work the other day and was like, "I'm looking for like a dark brown sport coat," and I was like, "Sorry, dude. Like straight up, we don't have no. any." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, like I think there's an old, not really an old adage, but you know, when you first start out, you know, people suggest that you buy a blue suit or a gray suit or even just a blue blazer and a gray mm-hmm. blazer, and that kind of has defined the options that you have in a- almost any store. Yeah, you know, and it it kind of kind of sucks because you know brown is such a great color, and I guess that's why it looks old. I mean, mm-hmm. brown suits have traditionally been like kind of like a country country style or, or whatever you know it's a casual fabric and you know because of that you know business guys don't wear it and then people stop making it because no yeah. one's buying it and then so when someone wears a brown suit now it looks automatically vintage and i mean i think um, that's a good point that he just brought up and it's kind of the opposite of the point i made earlier where it's like oh if every if you're wearing a suit every day there are going to be different details to make it interesting it's like you know not a lot of people wear suits anymore uh, That's typically yeah. they wear them for business purposes and in business you don't want to be all you know wet and wild so right and yeah. even then i feel like i mean this is getting a little off, off topic but like i feel like you can get wild you just people have to do it right like people okay when people see me have to wear vintage people are gonna think you're wearing like a 50s pinup tie with spectator shoes and you know and that i mean that's that's a style okay i'm not gonna bag on it too hard but overall, I think, at least for me and Spencer, the appeal of vintage is kind of like a classic look. Mm-hmm. Like, the styling isn't that old. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, we're not wearing, like, a floral shirt with a super spread collar, but we're still wearing, like, a striped shirt with a foolard tie or a striped tie. And it looks old because not many people do it now, but it's mm-hmm. not old in the sense that it's, like like unbearable to be yeah. worn today and that you know? i mean that's something also that i kind of want to talk about and it's like this is kind of you know i'm not i'm not throwing shade at anyone in the vintage scene because it's like i my philosophy is like you wear what you want to wear and it's like i'm not gonna talk shit but it's like what yeah what sometimes what makes kind of ethan and i and a couple of our friends different from a lot of people in the vintage scene is you know we don't we like go out of our way to make our stuff not look like costumey and there are and some it, it, yeah there are it some, might be because we're yeah. young <laughs> yeah that too and you know I, we, we were very aware of the connotations that vintage can hold for people yeah yeah exactly you know? or maybe we're just insecure that's but that's, a, that's that's also that's, true so you know <laughs> mm-hmm. i you know i i love wearing fedoras but I do it very seldomly because yeah. I know exactly what it looks like. Exactly. And every time I, I don't know if you guys have seen, but you know, I post on my Instagram and I try and have like a funny self-referential like caption. That way it's like, I know exactly what I look like, but I love it, <laughs> but whatever, you know, but, um, 
but yeah, I think approaching vintage with a classic look, mm-hmm. do you we, know, is is a way to to kind of make it wearable. Do we want to talk about kind of uh, something you do a lot? And I think this is this is more in casual wear. Um, what, do, but what do I do? Wh- what do you do? Let me tell you. Uh, you mix modern with vintage. Oh yeah, I do. That's something that a lot of people don't think about either. You know, um, when we talk when we talk about the vintage community, a lot of them have a very strict sense of vintage. You know, they only wear twenties to forties, and sometimes some of them only wear twenties together, mm-hmm. or thirties together, forties together, whatever. And you know, I mean, the fact of the matter is, some people mix and match even back then. Yeah. You know, kind of like today. You know, you might wear a t-shirt from a few years ago with the jeans you bought yesterday like it's not mm-hmm. that big of a deal except in this realm it suits you know and you know during the depression and you know especially like middle class working class families you know yeah you might not be able to buy a new pair of pants every week so you yeah. wear the same ones until they you know fell apart yeah and if you bought the pair of pants in the 30s then that's what you would wear in the 40s if you still had those pair of pants yeah, there's this so, photo yeah. that I love of, like, an old guy. I can't remember the date on it. I'm going to guess it's, like, sometime in the 40s. And he's, like, he's wearing a jacket that's, like, you know, kind of beat up. And there's, like, you know, some tearing on the seams and stuff like that. And he's just wearing it out because that's what he had. So, I mean, yeah. There's, yeah. there's also another one I saw, I think, where there was a guy wearing, like, a 30s jacket with, like, a 20s vest and 40s mm-hmm. pants. And it was, like, like a, I guess a teenager or something, maybe... Or maybe he's not even, maybe he's like a 20 year old or something. Maybe he's wearing his dad's clothes, but I think that's really interesting to see even back then that this, this cool guy was wearing mixing and matching different outfits or different mm-hmm. eras. So, um, but yeah, let's but get back, back going to, back to the point. Yeah. yeah I, I definitely combine vintage with today, um, to also kind of prove that it's not out of place. You know, mm-hmm. if I'm wearing like J crew trousers, I mean, they're, I try and wear them higher, you know, so they're higher rise, um, I don't get them tapered anymore, so they're you know they're still a semi full cut, and I think that still works with a lot of like the 30s and 40s jackets that again are unstructured or very softly tailored. That way, you know they don't have crazy shoulder pads, you know, to offset the kind of slim pants. But I think it I think it works. You know, mm-hmm. it it looks kind of the same thing as if what you'd see on the Armory or B and Taylor, you know, guys like that who wear fuller cut pants when you look at today's standards. Mm-hmm. And have a kind of a 30s and 40s inspired design jacket, you know, um, and it, it kind of changes it from being vintage to being a classic garment, you know, unless I'm wearing like something really crazy, but I don't really wear anything crazy anymore. So that's right. You, that's exactly uh, that's you're it. a Did I get now. Oh, you got yeah, it, no. dude. You know, the funny thing is that um, when I when I first met Spencer, uh Spencer would kind of mix like 40s and 50s um, and I would wear strict 30s Mm -hmm. and this is before I even started blogging and before I started to wear suits on on a semi-daily basis and I would remember like oh man Spencer come on man you gotta gotta stick with the 30s man you can't mix 50s and 40s and 30s together you're a you're a heretic but then now I like do it all the time yeah like like right now I mean you guys can't see what I'm wearing uh, but I'm wearing like 50s rayon trousers that have been tapered slightly so they're not like super wide legged and i'm wearing it with like a modern jacket and a 30s uh, work shirt and i think i, I think, think i'm wearing i think what? i'm wearing the same thing i was wearing when we recorded the first episode are you wearing the jack threads yeah i'm wearing the jack threads shirt right now <laughs> oh okay so for those of you guys who don't know he's wearing like a, a jack threads like War, uh, loop collar shirt? Yeah, like it's a like casual, a short like sleeve, 50s. like 50s, 60s loop collar shirt. I had my class at 8 a.m., so I didn't feel like doing... Uh, also, it's like... Uh, can we talk about the fact that it's 102 degrees? Oh, my God. In late October? Holy shit. It's fucking this terrible. Is, this is when I hate vintage because all my vintage... I'm, okay, okay. Let's, yeah. We can talk about that. Let's. So, um, one downside, I guess, to vintage is that... It's definitely heavier than anything that they've yeah, made today. Yeah, because it's like, and, a, that's, yeah. so here, here's the thing. So when you had to wear suits every day, uh, they definitely had like a lot of summer options. But because the fabric is kind of lighter, it's more fragile. And so I do have a Palm Beach suit uh, that I, I wore to Dapper Day and I wore to uh, a Hawaiian party at Paper Moon Vintage. Check it out. It's on the blog. I've worn that. I've worn that thing like four times because it's like, 
it's fragile and I'm always worried about it. And so... And yeah, it's also from like the early 30s. So it's, it's a fr- lot more yeah. fragile than the... I have ones from like the 40s. So they're a little bit better. Not really better made, but just the fabric is, is not as fine. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, but and yeah, s- let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about how, you know, I think it's just looming technology. Like back then, like they weren't able to make super fine wools. Like that wasn't a thing back in the day, like super 120, super 140. Yeah, yeah. Like that's, it was just straight up wool. And even though it's still worsted, it's still flannel. It was like tightly woven and heavy, mm-hmm. you know? Well, no, I, I think mean, not, I, not tightly. Woven, I think, but, you know, wool. yeah, exactly. It was, it was, it's heavier, but it's also more loosely woven. So it yeah, breathes, it, it well, breathes a little bad. bit better. Yeah. So, and also there's a, there's an aspect of drape too, you know, like, when you walk with like wider when you have like a a thick cuff and like a wide leg and you walk you mm-hmm. know you get a little bit more airflow right yeah you're doing the like vince mcmahon big ball walk there it is yeah. um, but like they that's just kind of how vintage was mm-hmm. and obviously you know if you compare it to today where you have like a super fine suit that could be made of like a a finer linen or whatever it might be a little bit more comfortable for for heavy for you know like summer Mm -hmm. and hot weather even though it's fucking october and it's 102 Um, degrees in orange county so i can't imagine what it must be like in la right now well luckily i'm inside uh recording this so it's i think our our air conditioning is like 76 degrees so nice you know sorry baby seals and you know sending hydro hydrocarbons or hydrofluorocarbons into the air from my air conditioning unit Mm-hmm. But Ethan's got to stay cool, baby. Hey, I'm checking the weather port. Do you know what it's going to be next Thursday? What's 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 it going to be next Thursday? 69. <laughs> oh, the sex number. The sex number, dude. You know, you know, the funny thing that I'm thinking of as we're recording this is that I think the first episode we didn't cuss at all. And even Fuck. though we flagged it, <laughs> we flagged it explicit because we knew that we're going to, <laughs> we're going to definitely cuss way more yeah um, we're so. swear boys swear boys we're lewd rude and totally crude you know i don't i don't know if people who read the blog um at least the adults who read the blog are the same people who are going to be listening to this um but i i still get comments about like hey this is a great article but you should cut down on the profanity and i'm like do you remember that okay. time for that's like storage wars and it's like Watch your, your profanity. <laughs> That's exactly what I think of. Yeah. Because I think, like, like, and this is, like, way off topic now, but, like, it's kind of, like, I want to write, like, the way I talk, mm. and the way we talk definitely we say We say ass. We say We say dicks. damn. <laughs> yeah. You know? And something that someone told me that I thought was really cool was that uh, he, he didn't complain about the profanity, but he said that, he likes the energy that we bring to talking about menswear. And I think that's a really cool thing because I think it, it ties into the whole fact that men can't be excited about fashion or that, you know, a manly man can't be in, into fashion. So yeah. they subvert it like, you know, like art of manliness or whatever, where they talk about, you know, oh, it's not about fashion. It's about looking nice. You know, they kind of hide the fact that it's, a, you know, it's an aesthetically pleasing thing. And then you have the opposite where you have permanent style. Which is still, which is a great blog, where he approaches it as like talking about art, and that's you know that's a cool thing too. Like you know talking about the the beauty of like a handmade shoulder, the hand rolled lapel, the hand stitched canvassing, whatever. But there's no one talking about it like a fucking video game. Like no one's mm-hmm. like this game is fucking sick. Like if you hang out with me and Spencer, we'll be like at Benny's house and we'll like run our hands through like his racks of clothing. I also like, like how oh, little fuck. you clearly know about video game commentary. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah. It's like that episode of the office where Andy's talking about how he could be a food critic. And he's like, this food is bad. <laughs> I think he's also talking about movies too. Like he's all yeah. like, that film is bad. Yeah. No, he's, I, I watched that episode yesterday. He said he couldn't be a film critic, but he could be a food critic oh, okay. or an art critic. There we go. That's been our office fan cast. There it, we go. It's called, uh, Dunder. Yeah. It's called Aesop's Fanlin. foibles. Aesop's foibles. <laughs> uh, I'm, deep pull. Oh, man, that's, that's a deep reference. I don't yeah. even know if many people remember, remember that. Uh-huh. Um, 
Did we, did we get everything we wanted to talk about? Uh, Logan, we, I don't know. <laughs> we started talking about the office and how we swear. Um, oh, God. Should, should we like, think, okay, so let, let's recap a little bit. So we talked about how... This is like what we learned today, all, children. This is, this is it. This is the summing up. To sum up, um, we've talked about how, you know, details that we love that, you know, you don't see anymore, which you can read in depth on the blog. Um, the price point is, you know, very the attractive. Tops. Yeah, do we, I feel like so we didn't hot. really talk about that too much. Like, okay, yeah, it's it's I like mean, okay, we could go into that a little bit more. Yeah, let's go into that. Like, it's I mean, way okay, better. so I, I know Spencer does a lot more in-person shopping than yeah, I do. Yeah, because I, I well, got burned a couple times in early in my vintage career uh, and, with you know, online I, stuff. I mean, every, everyone, I think everyone does, but like yeah. you know, for me, a lot of my like '60s and '70s stuff, a lot of my sack suits, I've gotten on eBay, you know, and. I'm telling you guys, eBay is just, if you know what you're looking for and you're educated enough to know the details, eBay is like your best friend. Like, I, you know, you submit a best offer for 100 bucks, and 9 out of 10 times, they accept it. And so I've gotten, like, suits for 100 bucks. I think I've gotten three suits for $75, which was insane, you know. And, again, like, the 60s and 70s, they're not too different compared to like a regular suit like they're not super vintage but they're not super modern either but they i think they still count right Mm -hmm. so i mean yeah maybe not to there again no shade to anybody in the vintage scene there's a lot of people in the vintage scene that don't count anything vintage after like 1950 so i I disagree there yeah i've differentiated it by talking about thrifted clothing which i usually call like 70s through 90s stuff and then true vintage which is i think is like 20s through the 60s that's how i differentiate mm. on the blog um so anyway like you can find vintage stuff on ebay if you if you're very confident about your sizing um and if you've got a good tailor which i think is very important um but yeah it's it's a lot cheaper than buying like a, a used ralph lauren suit on ebay will get you like even still four or five hundred bucks because retail is like 1200 for ralph lauren i think you know, and getting a similar suit that's from the 60s from a guy who's just trying to get rid of clothes or, you know, thrifted whatever, it's a lot cheaper. And I think that's one of the biggest appeals of vintage. Getting getting the clothes that you like for a price that's largely very that, affordable. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I guess the flip side is, you know, going to actual vintage stores and more often than not... You know, it, it's a bit, it's a little bit pricier than buying something something on eBay, but it's still better than buying something in a store. Oh yeah. You know, even like again, like that four hundred fifty dollar brown sack suit I got from a vintage dealer. You know, finding a three piece brown suit at again like Ralph Lauren, if they even make a brown suit, it's still gonna cost you twelve hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and four fifty that's that's a fucking steal. That's he literally you know, stole I, it. Right. I mean, I guess comparable, you'd go to, like, uh, Suit Supply. I think Suit Supply is four to $500. But, I mean, like, there's a difference between vintage off-the-rack and modern off-the-rack. Like, modern off-the-rack, they don't give you a lot of room for alterations. Um, because, you know, they, they try and save as much money on the manufacturing process. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually with vintage, they there's a lot you can do, you know. A lot more in the side seams, a lot more in the jacket that you can let out, or you can take it in, you know. So, going with vintage kind of gives you a bit more leeway to experiment with your tailoring and to kind of get the fit right. Um, and, I mean, I have a brown suit from Seat Supply that was $500. And even though it's great, you know, it's got patch pockets and everything, the, you know, the, the construction is not the same. Yeah. And, uh... I mean, it's passable today, and you can still, I still wear it, you know, to kind of have, like, a vintage or a modern interpretation of vintage, but it's, you know, it's not the same thing as wearing, like, a, a straight-up 1950s sack suit from Brooks Brothers. Mm-hmm. Like, you, there, you can tell, definitely tell the difference when, when, uh, when, you know what you, when you know what you're looking for. Exactly. I mean, maybe to, like, a regular dude, you might, you might not be able to know. Just a regular guy in the neighborhood. Just a regular guy... Is that how the song goes? No, I'm it, I'm quoting the first episode of Nathan for you. Oh, I was going for like a uh, Mr. Rogers no, kind of deal. It's not Mr. Rogers. No. Um. So yeah, we talked about that. We talked about what else? Is that it? 
No, I mean, we definitely talked about a lot more. We've been recording for, I don't know. Oh, wow. Half an hour. Wow. Good job. Time we, flies. We, time time flies. Um, um, and where we're going, we don't need any we're roads. Probably, we're probably going to, I don't know, we might record another episode of this when we know what we're doing. Like a right. vintage 2.0 thing. Um, every podcast but, at the beginning starts out bad. And I that so I'm giving us some wiggle room to be bad. We're just gonna yeah, be no, bad. I've been listening to my brother, my brother and me, and good podcast yeah. recommended. Yeah, it's great. Um, but I, I mean, I'm on like on like episode twenty out of like three hundred because I started from the beginning, and yeah, everyone is bad in the beginning. <laughs> everyone is bad. <laughs> everyone yeah. is bad. But you know, no, it's I think we're gonna, you know, be able to improve Punch it as up. we go along, you know, and so. You know, bear, bear uh, with us here. <laughs> yeah. Should we should we close with, like, here's where you can get it? Yeah, let's, In, let's or, close yeah, with that. Yeah, so we already talked about eBay. A lot of this is going to be very Southern California-centric. So sorry to you non-locals. Um, you know, you, first of all, let me just say, like, a lot of people ask me, like, hey, do you have any great, like, vintage stores in New York? And I'm like, buddy, I haven't been to New York ever okay yeah um, i was like waiting once. for the last part of that yeah you know or someone's asked oh yeah what about london i'm like dude like when i was in london i didn't even have time to find anything so i went to a really good vintage store and i couldn't i couldn't remember i can't remember what it is i have a book that has its name in it i'm gonna go find that right quick you tell about something it's old hat stuff. i think it's old hat i don't think it's old hat um, but let me check okay so you well, keep talking okay well okay if you're in london i know that the spitalfield market was pretty dang awesome <laughs> Uh, there's a guy, I think his name is Ben Leather Goods Company. Quick shout out um, to Ben because I met him. He's a cool guy. And he sells a lot of vintage, um, like casual wear, a lot of like sports shirts and jackets and army stuff. Um, and I, I definitely know that there's another guy a bit more professional, like, but his stuff was way more expensive. But anyway, like, you know, going to flea markets, just kind of in general, is a good place to start. Um, Sorry, I just I just burped. If you were nice, dude. That. Yeah, but I, nice. I turned my I turned my mouth away from the mic. It was um, Levinson's. Levinson's. Levinson's is great. Uh, the I, the owner was super nice. Great. So check that out. There you go. That's in London, right? That is in London, UK. It's on Cheshire and Brick Lane. There That's, you go. Yeah. Right, but I mean, oh yeah. So back back to what I was saying. Uh, flea markets in general is a great place to look at. Um, maybe not for tailoring as much, but uh, I mean, I've been going into a whole bunch of more like casual kind of stuff, like you know, like military jackets, wo- short coats, uh, work jackets, whatever. And going to a flea market, you'll find that shit. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's literally everywhere, just because you know it's a, l- a little bit more collectible. It's a little bit more easier to wear because you know it looks great with jeans, looks great with chinos. I still, um, I still haven't been to one, man. I want, I need to go. That is not my fault. I've invited you twice and you uh, backed out okay. both times. Well, it's either because I work on Sundays or I was broke at the time. So <laughs> broke and bespoke. Actually, no. I think that's a follower. <laughs> oh, nice! Shout out! <laughs> yeah. Quick shout, shout out, out to broke and bespoke. Yeah. Um, but other than that, okay, so let's. Places that we've gone to, uh, there's Paper Moon Vintage. Yeah, paper, okay, so I'll talk yeah. about Orange County places, which is mostly Joyride and Sneaky Tiki. I haven't been there, but I've I've met the owner, and he's super cool. That's in Long Beach. Yep. Those uh, are my I've, Orange I've, County I've, stores. <laughs> yeah, I've met him. Uh, he was at Dapper Day, the Dapper Day Expo, and I got a leather jacket from him. Mm-hmm. He does reproduction denim, I think, and yeah. reproduction uh, rayon shirts. Um, so... That's definitely something to look at if that's your jive. That's mm-hmm. what your jam is. Um, so Paper Moon Vintage in Hollywood is a good place. Uh, 20s through the early 60s. Uh, a lot more men's stuff now. And they do events, I think, every two weeks for yeah, the full ev- moon. Yeah, every full moon. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, the owner is Nicole. She's very nice. Um, yeah, great. And her husband, great Nathan, stuff. is like... He's got like one of the greatest collections of vintage ever. And occasionally... You'll find some of his stuff. Uh, I know that she sold some of his shirts that he doesn't wear anymore, and they're like dope ass spear point German 1930s shirts. So, mm-hmm. oh that's, wait, that's a good one. Hey, one more for London. I can't believe we missed this. The vintage showroom. It's expensive, but it's like even just to go in there and look at their collection is amazing. 
So all oh, you yeah. UK listeners out there. I think I checked SoundCloud, and I think, like, ten people listened to our thing, and I wow. think half of it was, like, MJ. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Let's, tr- let's check our – I'm going to check our subscriber count on uh, iTunes really quick. And uh, I don't want to pro- be sad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be sad. Well, we I think it's promote it, though. Yeah, I think it's at zero. You're going to have to post about it because people don't give a shit about me, so. You just got to um, be involved more. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, also – uh, Wait, hold on. Let, let, let's let's leave that for the closing because let's keep talking about where okay, to find vintage. No, yeah, that's that's what um, I'm gonna be talking about. Yeah. So um, did we did well, while I was gone? Did you mention uh, Reese's? Nope. I literally just talked about Paper Moon. I'm about to get into the Reese's vintage pieces. So Reese's vintage pieces. Say that three times fast. Um, is operated by our friend Benny Reese, and he touts the largest collection of suits from the 19. 19- 20s and 1960s like i think ever on the west coast at least you know outside of like costume houses or whatever um i mean we've bought we've gotten a few suits from them from him um some pretty rare belt back stuff some war core stuff he's got everything he buys Mm -hmm. everything um but he yeah you just find him on facebook and just message him and he'll you know it's like like an appointment kind of thing you just stop by his house and he'll, you know, he'll show you his entire garage of vintage. It's, yep, it's a fun garage. It's literally, like, it doesn't even hold his car anymore, I think. Because it's just filled with racks and racks of vintage. Uh-huh. Um, what else is there? Um, uh, well, this is, uh, speaking of costume houses, this is appointment only, but Ro- Roxy Deluxe. Yeah, operated by uh, our friend Lulu. You know, funny, I went, I hung out with my friend yesterday who is a costume designer, and uh, she's pulled some stuff from Lulu's, or from Ooh. Roxy's, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, so it's, an, it's an active, uh, it's an active costume house, so, you know, the stock changes depending if people have been renting out stuff, but she is definitely open to selling, um, again, appointment-based, and uh Yeah. That's, yeah. that's pretty good. We've been going there a few times. Um, last thing I think that we should mention, uh, this is breaking news. Uh, SJC, Whoa. Simon James Cathcart, literally just released um, his suits, his his collection of suits. Uh, so yeah. right now Belt he bags. has... Yeah, so uh, I just got the workwear suit. Um, I'm, I'm waiting for it to come in, obviously, because I just, I just ordered it the other day. But um, he has a brown tweed three-piece belt back suit and a blue one, and they are both gorgeous. They're both yeah, seriously they're pretty. Amazing. They're pretty perfect. I yeah. think the price uh, two forty-five like six- pounds for the coat, ninety-five for the vest, and one ninety-five for the trousers. So you do the math, idiot. It's about like six hundred fifty U.S. dollars. Okay, that's pretty um, good. Yeah, yeah. So that's, I mean, yeah, that's pretty good, right? For mm-hmm. a, a good off the rack but vintage detailed. Yeah, and jacket. Uh, again, I just suit. got his workwear suit. Uh, it's a little bit less expensive. I think I was, I was honestly pretty conflicted because I was like, oh, the tweed suit's gonna come out in a couple days. Do I want that? I think the f- deciding factor for me is that I imagine that the workwear suit's gonna be a little bit lighter weight. And I could wear that more. So uh, yeah, for those guys who haven't checked it out yet, the workwear suit I think is made of canvas. I think uh, or some sh- chambray. 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 Thirteen ounce yeah. cotton chambray. Wow, thirteen ounce. That's still pretty hefty. <laughs> yeah, but you know. Yeah, I mean that's probably better than tweed, especially if it's a hundred and fucking degrees in uh-huh. October. Yeah. Where the hell is our fall fashion? Our fall weather. It, I mean, we don't have that. <laughs> nope, we do not. Um, but I think yeah. So you know. If you want to buy from a vintage dealer go on ebay or buy reproduction Uh there's definitely options out there and uh yeah adventures out there that's from up wow up reference nice that was nice i like it thank you thank you um so guys thank you for listening to this rambling podcast kind of I guess was tangentially related to vintage that we really, really yeah. Like I said, we about. might do another episode of this later um, like down the line. Down the line, maybe uh, we'll have like a guest that we can talk to you as well. Yeah, that would. I think we're gonna focus a lot on guests because like there's so much you can say about fashion. Like I, I mean, there's only so much. So uh, right, 
expect a lot of interviews in the future um stuff like that and maybe even like recap stuff i think you know like yeah like sports it, recaps yeah like instant replays uh-huh um no but you know like you know we go to an event or whatever yeah and uh i think that would be that would be pretty good all right guys i want to say thank you for listening to this podcast did i say that already you did but that's okay i did okay well for those of you who are listening right now i cut out a little bit before this so Uh that's why i had to say it again um again you can find us on at, well, Spencer, you really? can handle this, right? We can find us yeah. on any any yeah. kind of any, podcast, any thing, podcast right? SoundCloud, any podcatcher uh, where podcasts are sold. It's free. Just kidding. Um, but you're already listening to that, so you know where to find us. You should well, check tell, us out. Tell other people. Okay. Yeah. Tell other people. Tweet at us. Uh, do we have a Twitter? I don't, I don't know, but you can you can find us on Instagram. I think you can find uh, us. Oh direction. Jesus, we're not good at this. Yeah, find us no, on Instagram. But, we have a Facebook group. It's called Street Expressa discussion what is it called ethan the street express the community community check yeah. it out it's a fun community uh sometimes we talk about things uh you can ha- also find us you can I, I might be better for for you guys to follow us on our individual uh instagram accounts for now yeah uh, i'm at ethan m wong i'm at spencer dso i think yeah you are don't worry okay um but yeah i mean We'll probably have Thank new you. episodes out for you every two every weeks, two hopefully. Weeks, hopefully. Thank you, you know? to Aaron Ramsey, who designed our cover art. Oh, Thanks yeah, Ethan yeah. for doing our uh, We Shop Network ass theme. Oh, so. yeah. All right. We'll see you in the we'll, next one. Is that a good closer? Uh, let's let's try one more thing. Um, Clay Nice. Clay, Clay Nice, everyone. Clay yeah. Knight. You don't want to... Get it, and you don't want to get rid of it. Okay, that's it. Okay, bye. That's it. Okay, okay, thanks, bye. Rawr.